Well, it's Sunday, March 25th, 2012, and it's time for Comments X. Yeah, another week has passed us by, and another weekend is upon us. And <laughs> I had a mini crash this weekend. Uh, was too tired to go anywhere, so... <sighs> Cassandra on a time off went to see a show, uh... In your last video, we guys, I guess she had some extra time off. She would, had some free time. Uh, my free time, if I get free time, uh, more often than not, uh, what it, all of the, the only thing I want to do is sleep. So that's what I did uh, mostly yesterday and today. I'm just now getting up. I tried to get up earlier today, but it didn't work out. <sighs> I couldn't open my eyes. That happens sometimes when my eyes get too tired. Uh, as soon as there's darkness or any time like, the lights are off, my eyes automatically close and uh, I have a hard, a difficult time opening them. Uh, inching forward with the video production, it's a, a slow process. One of the big, one of the big problems I'm having is that uh, I'm running on a hard drive space, and I'm trying to clean up my library. So uh, cause I know that I, uh, every time you put stuff in the library, it, it, there's it goes in somewhat disorganized, and then you have to go in there. And you have to organize. You have to sit down and clean everything up. But as you start doing that, you start clear, you start getting more and more space uh, on the hard drive. But uh, if you don't clean it up, uh, then it backs up. So I have to do some cleaning up. I have to do some, you know, on the hard drives on the on the, on the main server library uh, on, on the main uh, library server, uh, and that will clear off some room on the desktop to do some uh, to do some videos. Because uh, right now things are so backed up, there's really no room to do anything on there. Uh, and then once the I should uh, I'm aiming to get out. I was supposed to do. Uh, a couple of comment videos yesterday, but I never got around to doing them. I was stuck doing some other stuff, and, and primarily some the, the cleaning that needs to get done around here. I've got to do more of the cleaning again today. Uh, I'll try to get a whole chunk of cleaning done today. That's the goal. Uh, I did manage, uh, though, uh, yesterday I managed to get out... Uh, uh, if you look at the down below bar, uh, I've rearranged how I do the featured channels. Uh, my first friends that I that I uh, and people that I uh, like. If you look at the first row of featured channels, it's Nerd Zarell, and then there's Helicopter and Right and Proper Ladies. Uh, Nerd Zarell is, is the uh, channel that I was watching uh, before I started and gave me the idea that I should, that I, I could do something like this. Uh, so that's why I put her on there. I'm the go and I go by every uh, every day, uh, just to sort of see what she's doing. And then uh, next people that I really sort of got along with was uh, helicopter and um, and right and proper ladies with the next group, and then. Everybody else is on the other uh, that I that are now my that, that are my friends my my growing friend list is down uh, down on the, on the side there. So, and then below that, um, below the uh, the top row on the main page, there's the uh, cha other channels that I've set up. These are the different research institutes. Uh, and yesterday I got one up for this called uh, APIS TV API. Uh, as it stands for the Australian Physics uh, Society uh, TV. It's uh, I have a uh, an, if you're interested in astronomy and physics or in science, there that's sort of like a science club uh, society type of thing, uh, and that's the TV channel, the YouTube TV channel for it. Uh, and I'll be putting information there on there about. Uh, uh, Information important to the Astronomy Club and Astronomy Society. Uh, all the documentaries, every, everything that, that is eventually produced, uh, they're going to be, be initially produced on their in, in, channel on their channels. 
so all the notes will be on their channels. But once they're starting to produce shows and episodes, those episodes will air on Physics TV. So uh, if you want to do all the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes will be on all the different channels in terms of the different notes and the chunks that I put that eventually be put together. You'll see them on the uh, channels. And it's, if you're thinking of coming into university here, and there is an option if you want to do university here, you can uh, at the university channel there. They'll eventually be providing information on how to get involved in the university, how to, how to start studying. And from there, you all you need to do is look and see what I'm doing on YouTube in terms of the notes I'm putting up and seeing how I'm doing my studying, and just simply replicate that because all 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 subjects the university is based in library science. Uh, so if you're a person who reads and has a, a good book collection, enough to say that you you have a small library, well then you've got enough materials uh, to get st started at the university, no matter. This is no matter what age you're at. And all subjects come out of that library. So any, so let's say if you want to do history, you have to go build a small history library just the way you have uh, for, the. let's say, assuming your your uh, library is all fiction at this mo point, you start off with a fiction library, um, then you need to build a, a larger history library. And it's not that, mo not mo not that much more, co not, not that not that it's not really that uh i'm saying that much more complicated it's it's kind of grammatically incorrect but it it's it, it, it again it kind of it kind of relays the, the, that it has a complexity to it but it's really not it's not too much more complex than uh than your initial work of building your, your fiction library. And I'll give you an example of this, of how you would go from a fiction library to a non-fiction library. Uh, many people now uh, are fans of the Hunger Games, or uh, I would say they're mostly girls who are, are, are these fans. Uh, this is what I've seen on the YouTube. If you're a fan of the Hunger Games and you are a person who reads a lot and you've got a nice size library, you know, a fiction library. How do you go from fiction to nonfiction and uh, into uh, so, 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 some academic studies? Well, the thing is, is that if you're studying English literature, then there's no problem there because you've already got the beginning basis for studying for English, English literature. Because all you need to do is take any one of the books and do a study of the grammar that they are using, the, the, the writing styles. And there is your English literature there, English literature there, and you've got enough different authors that you can do a comparative study of uh, of literature. Uh, you would extend that, and that this is how you would get into both history and literature. Is if you are a fan of the Hunger Games, uh, you take that book, and because it's related. It's, it's be, all these stories are based on or, call, or well in the, 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 anything that's that anything that is dystopian. First was done really by George Orwell, and particularly was 1984 and uh, Animal Farm are the two primary dystopian books. And what they are is is that the dystopian books show. Uh, how bad a society can get. As a matter of fact, the Hunger Games society is structured in many ways, exactly the way uh, the society is structured in, in George Orwell, ni 1984. Now, the book 1984 is it is a uh, it's kind of a, a bizarre uh, type of book because if you're thinking it was written in 1984, it wasn't. It was actually written in the 1930s. It was uh, written uh, really early. It was you know way before. Uh, uh, <laughs> the con it, it was written at the time when, when 1984 was considered to be the future. So that's that's uh, that's how old the book 1984 is. And uh, George Orwell writes about this uh, society that functions in many ways, in many ways, exactly like the society in uh, Hunger Games. 
that they, there are a top few who do very well, and then the rest have to suffer and live at the mercy of these elite few. And the, big, the term there, and this is where, you've, if you've ever heard the term, term Big Brother, well, Big Brother, or nanny state, comes from this Orwellian term uh, in 1984 because the elders of the state, the, these, these elites of the state, were called your Big Brother, and they were there to look after all of your needs. And, of course, you had to pay respect and tribute to these uh, pe people who are doing such nice things for you. But if you, as you go on, you, you read the book, you realize as you start, sort of start picking and asking the questions beneath the surface, they weren't doing such nice things. That they had, uh, you know, human sport where, where people were being eliminated. They had, uh, if you criticize the government or these people, that you could be arrested and sent to these education camps and what's called these, or, or so say the re, the proper term is re-education camps where they would train you for proper thinking, for proper speaking. And this is where the term politically correct comes from. Politically correct is, is, is an Orwellian term. And so, as I was looking at the Hunger Games, it struck me how similar uh, George Orwell's 1984 and the Hunger Games are. And you could even make a comparison between the Hunger Games and Animal Farm. Because Animal Farm shows you, uh, if you wonder how a society, like you get, how you get to a point that you get to in hunger society, how you get there, you need to read the book Animal Farm. And based on those two things, that you need, then you need, once you have George Orwell, and understand that George Orwell is talking about socialism, you need to go and study the history of socialism. And particularly, you'd be going back and you'd be studying eugenics, you'd be studying uh, Freud. Uh, you'd be studying Jung, uh, the, the Freud and Jung are two psych psychologists. Uh, then you'd be studying uh, eugenics is uh, uh, the beginning of the work on DNA. Uh, before DNA existed, they, these were basically who, who were, they were chemists. Uh, the work uh, essentially came out, the eugenics work essentially came out of Germany. Uh, and it was a philosophy that was popular. And if you uh, watch my uh, videos on the Bass Institute, particularly on the introduction to Adventures in the Library, uh, you'll see this uh, as I read the terms moron, and then I go from morons, and I find out the term idiot and uh, imbecile, and I go read those de definitions. Well, the books between uh, before 1960s have this uh, eugenics view uh, of the world where they believe that behavior is genetically dispossessed. Uh, uh, that mean it basically means that uh, or, 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 or say, uh, of, of a genetic origin. And what this means is, is that society before then, if you had particular behavior traits that were considered to be and this is a term they use, defective, that you are a defective person, then it could be argued in court that you wouldn't be allowed to have children after that because you were, uh, you were mentally, you were defective. And in order to prevent this, de defe this defect to uh, be carried on, that defect had to end with you, and that means you had to end. This is, the way, this is actually the, the terms they used uh, up until 1960s. Uh, and so you can actually know in, in history there, uh, if you want to go take a look at this uh, for history, you can go take a look at uh, the old TV series uh, from the 1930s. No, it's not a TV series. It's old. These are short movie series. Uh, before you had TV, uh, everyone used to go to the movie theater and you'd watch these movie shorts just sort of like, like, like uh, short cartoons. Everything was done in the movies. It, it went to sort of like the Nickelode uh, the, it, it Nickelodeon wasn't a channel. Nickelodeon was a type of movie theater that you went to and you saw these very short films j uh, and half-hour reels 
just the way you went and watched TV, you would go to the movie theater and you watch a couple of reels. You, uh, as we were a kid, you would watch your cartoons, you'd watch your 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 comedy TV shows, and these have lasted over. T these have lasted till today. So if anyone who knows the Three Stooges today, and uh, you go back and take a look at the Three Stooges, because Three Stooges were is actually a satire based on the concept of mental defect. And this is why they're poor the way they're poor. And they're always having to, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's out of the depression, but the thing is, they're in a situation where they are mentally defective uh, in the show, and they're, called, they're, they're certified morons. And they will tell you this because they belong to the, 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 uh, the, the uh, local, uh, and they unionize the morons. And the morons, uh, they belong to the, the uh, yeah, they belong to the uh, local six and seven eights. And a lot, of the, a lot of this comedy is also, you can see this comedy in the early Bugs Bunny shows, the early Looney Tunes, a lot of the early cartoons have a lot of this uh, eugenic, uh, moron, mental defective uh, humor in it. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> if you want to follow things, in this line, you can trace this up, this line all the way up to Barney. Barney, the voice of Barney, the way the vo the character is, he comes all the way up the line through the Looney Tunes to uh, this author, this author named John Steinbeck, who wrote a book called *Of Mice and Men*. And there's this one big, huge guy named Lenny, who was considered to be a moron. He was, he was, he was big, but he was considered considered to be the uh, the uh, considered to be uh, mentally defective and had the mind of a three-year-old or a four-year-old, and he behaved like that. And so this is where you see in Bugs Bunny here, the oh, hi George, how you doing, right? This is my friend George. If you hear any voice like that, which is also the Barney voice, uh, this Barney voice is based on the cartoon representation of these mentally defective people. Uh, and it carries through all the way today into into <laughs> the presentation of Barney. And, a lot of, and this is a lot of these these adult, you know, these these shows for kids where you have these uh, big dinosaurs or whatever uh, uh, jumping around acting dopey. This is based on the mentally defective. Uh, and this goes all the way back to the eugenics. This goes back to George Orwell. And you can bring it, then you bring it back up to uh, the Hunger Games again. So this is how you connect a, a fictional library to nonfiction uh, and then throw it and you span it out and your library can start growing. Because all these things have connections. They're, 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 all these things are interconnected. And as you go out and start finding these connections, and this is part of what your studies is all about. This is what studying is. Uh, and this is how your university uh, education sort of evolves. Uh, you can really put together a good, interesting, and fun education program for yourself. I mean, if you're a, a, an investigative type of person where you want to go and find out things that people know, very few people know about, or understand this is how you would do it, and this is why you know it, this is why sometimes common sex is, is is posted to the university channels. You'll see that if you're a university student, uh, you need to watch some of this stuff because this is this is how you take your your your, uh, your education to the next level. Because one of the programs I'm setting up, and this is what I'm working on now, and this is why uh, the Apis channel was set up because there's going to be a new program inside the Apis channel that's going to help a program at the university uh, for unemployed universities. And this is a huge problem now. There are a huge number of students finishing with engineering degrees and so on and so forth who don't know how to find a job. And part of the problem that I've noticed is they really don't understand library science. They don't know how to go out and really research their field to find out what they should be doing. And the thing is, they should have done this. If you're... Uh, because no one's born rich. You need to feed, You need to find a way from day one, from the time you want to start studying. You know you want to go down this, into this type of studying field. Know 
any university degree that you finish with, no one's going to stand out there handing you out a, a slip for a job. Jobs have to be uh, uh, jobs at that l at that level, the higher paying levels, are all competitive. And if you don't have a portfolio, and if you haven't set out that por for portfolio from the beginning of your education, then you're not going to find a job because your 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 education, what you're presenting, is incomplete. And so that you have to go back and complete the parts that you're missing. And so this, you know, this this is the thing is that uh, you can use everything that I'm posting up here uh, into uh, as a, as a benefit to your field to go back into uh, uh, your education and finish up the holes that you have. If you're going into education, you're a person who's just thinking about going into education and getting a degree then you need to understand that you need to start looking at your fields and, and really learning the library science right from the beginning. And uh, the previous example that I gave about the higher games and how it connects to George Orwell and then how it connects to the Three Stooges and then how the Three Stooges, the three Stooges connect to, uh, uh, to Barney and then back again to uh, John Steinbeck's uh, fictional work uh, of Mice and Men. And you should read a lot of John, John Steinbeck is, is a very good author that, that, that he's uh, one of these quintessential authors that needs to be read uh, because he influences a lot of what goes on in society today. Uh, this is the way you need to go back and if you haven't done this already, if you're a reader, and if you hadn't read, read the Victorian women's, uh, Victorian women's authors, and it, two, not just two, one or two, Go through a number of them. There's a whole bunch out there that are very, very, very good. And they really sort of set the standard, not for women's authors, but for literature. They, they set the bar for English literature. For the literary standards were set by these women. They weren't necessarily set by the men, they were set by the women. Who at the time, if you go back and study who they were, you go st study their biographies wrote as men, their, their nom de plumes, their, their, their pseudonyms, uh, were male. They weren't writing as females, they were writing as males. So, uh, there's, there's an enormous amount to study there. Uh, for academics, the earlier you start, the better. So there's no age restriction to start at, the, at my university. Uh, is that if you're younger, if you're, uh, if you're pre-high school, uh, if, no, if you're pre-university, you go into the UEP undergraduate extension program, which is, it extends the university's undergraduate program all the way down to grade three. Uh, if you are of university age, uh, then you just choose the undergraduate program. That's the standard uh, uh, academia university. And uh, I'll leave this. <laughs> we, there is room. I'll show you later on how to do graduate and then postdoctoral work because uh, there's your bachelor's degree and after your bachelor's the bachelor's degree uh, in terms of academics is you just your introduction to academics uh, then there's the graduate and if you're going on for your PhD there's no point to do the ma point to doing the masters uh, you just go straight directly to the PhD which is about four years uh, your first two years uh, of your graduate work is deciding what your thesis is going to be uh, in terms of what you're going to be studying uh, for your PhD, what 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 the main topic is going to be, and just because you do have to choose one thing, and then so it takes just about two years. And you're still doing your studying, you're still doing your reading, you're still sort of building building the library as you continue further, but you're building it from a different perspective because you've had four years of uh, undergraduate experience. Uh, with your library, so that's how you how you you base your graduate work on that. You base it on your ex those experiences, and then you start refining and narrowing your focus in terms of what you're going to study as your main study. Uh, so, so you can produce a paper, basically, which is a book, a large, uh, which is your thesis, and then you do your postdoctoral work, which is another four years, which defends your thesis. And after which, if you if you you do a good enough job, your thesis becomes a theory, and that's the thing you can continue working on for uh, the rest of your life, sort of. <laughs> and this is why you know this is where it becomes complicated. You working, you start d defining what you're going to be uh, for the rest of your life uh, in that period there. 
but even when you get to your PhD, if, if your PhD turns out to be like mine, which is open exploration, well, yeah, my, my PhD thesis was a, a, a single thing, but the topic was so wide that I could end up going and exploring anything that I wanted to do because, you know, open exploration is just this. It's open exploration from the point of view of quantum physics, uh, uh, random want that it can be done like this, and this is where I am today. So uh, it, I am the living proof that it, that it is, and I'll sort of be bringing out uh, what my thesis is and what my theory is, and it's a very bizarre thing because it's something new and something completely different because uh, the route I chose was completely different. So uh, I'll leave that for now. It's been about a half hour, so... Uh, I'll see you uh, either tomorrow for the news or sometime later, later today if I can get some of the, the comment videos out. All right, take it easy.